my channel. So, in today's video, <laughs> I am doing the very, very kind of terrifyingly highly requested um, bookshelf tour. For those of you, hello, my name is Emma. So, so, so I finally got. Uh, after many, 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 many months of begging my mother, she finally agreed. <laughs> I got bookshelf made. <laughs> Yay! If you haven't seen my previous bookshelf tour, I did that back in May last year. I will link that for you there. So you can see the literal friggin' glow up that this bookshelf has been. I'm just so happy that this is here. It went up very quickly, it took a few days, and my god, the like, just the satisfaction I have of this bookshelf is enormous. And then I went to put all my books on it and I was like, oh, oh, I might, I might be needing another bookshelf quite soon because, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> so this bookshelf very much has part of my heart. You might remember though from the last bookshelf tour video that these are not all the books I have. I do have books in my room and I do have books in my room at home, but I'm just gonna keep it to these guys now because those other two places haven't changed. Again, if you're curious, my old video is linked below. I think I will, you know, give you the grand tour now. I will definitely chat you through each shelves, like how I generally organize them and whatever, and then I will go through in a little bit more, little more detail. For some extra context to my, I was gonna say collection, but it's, it's a, a special word for a book collection, Emma, is a library. So if you want extra context for my little library, I'm a complete grad. A lot of my stuff is very Eurocentric, but it does go a little bit <laughs> further afield once in a while. It's mainly what this shelf is. So a lot of things I did buy for class. So there are a lot of things that I have like half read, but not like entirely read, um, but I tried. So I'll chat you through my shelves and then we can go into, into a little bit more <laughs> detail. So let's start here. This shelf is arguably my like pride and joy. These are all of my Oxford classics. So like half of these I bought for my courses, half of them I bought because I really wanted them and then I ended up also needing them for my course which was really really fun. Most of these are 18th century and 19th century literature and everything I have. Alphabetical order! <laughs> I organise everything as you can see very clearly by edition and then within edition I do by author and then I would love to do author date but that requires a lot more effort. So I do alphabetically author then I do alphabetically book. These are my favourite editions, again why do I have so so many of them. I've said this a million times across different videos, like these just are the best editions in my opinion. They have really good fonts, this is Pope, they have really good fonts to start with, very generous margins if you uh, you know scribble all over your books like you should do. And they also have a really really good paratext, the introductions are always great, they always do a really good chronology of their authors and just think Everything else they give you to supplement the text kind of puts it really well in perspective and it's just so helpful. These really don't. I think these editions are less geared towards studying, but these ones definitely are. And these ones are a little bit less, but still are. And these always give really good further reading. So if you so if you guys are ever stumped with an essay, just flick through these. They have lists of further reading, so then you can just like go, you know, go JSTOR and like go Google it. Don't underestimate how much you can get out of Google Books, okay? There is a lot of stuff on there. Especially when, like me, you do all the texts and then our oh, copyright restrictions. Isn't that fun? These are my great ideas. Because they're numbered, I can organize them like that, which is so useful. I've been dyslexic, I'm a sucker for organizing things visually. Because I can like remember what it looks like and then I'm like, oh, I need that book. What did it look like? <laughs> and I do have a couple of rogue editions. They just made more sense here because they were smaller rather than putting them all the way at the top where my non-edition editions go, are exiled to. <laughs> these I'm kind of biased. I think these babies are my favourites. As you know, where is it? This is my, you can just see here at the top like what clearly you know, the age of books last which gets read most. But yeah, obviously you guys know how much I love Roxana. And I did then buy more founders, but I haven't read it yet. I feel like this is a little bit more the like, I don't know. No, I don't, don't want to say diseased. Um, but I feel like this one's probably more like the, not the rakes progress, what's it? What's the Hogarth, the other one? Oh, what is it? Either way, the one with the prostitute is, I feel like it's a little bit more like this. So you know, Diderot, Vanand, loved it. Give my quick set, love it. Moliere I had to buy for a golden age French theatre module. Pope, again, is lots of fun. I really, for someone who has this much Anne Radcliffe, I, 
I haven't read any of it. Mum has read, um, I think not the Italian, a Sicilian romance, and she said it was kind of like reading Scooby Doo, <laughs> um, because obviously she comes up with so many of these gothic tropes and stuff, but like before they're a thing, so it's it's quite funny. So like, ooh, I did enjoy Rousseau mainly because how much I disagreed with him. So it's always you should read the people you know you don't like, just because either way a response is a response, and that's always really important. Yes, I liked Madame de Stael. She was really good. This is more like romantic. So, or you love The Red and the Black, or you love The Tartar Has a Palmer. Um, but you cannot love both. And I fucking hate The Red and the Black. That was shit. Um, but The Tartar Has a Palmer, I think I honestly would probably reread it. Like, oh my god. This book brought me so much joy. And I just honestly, I feel like you just feel like a teenager again. And like, I'm, you just fall in love with the breeze and he's stupid and he's like dumb and a child um but my god do you fall in love with him um and also with it being set in like ugh, bits of france and northern italy and stuff um and switzerland as well like i've been to the lakes uh, quite a bit so like just sort of reading about that is always quite fun so really enjoyed that i had to buy stern for a module never read it i have a different stern oh, here it is sentimental journey i want i do mean to read that but i haven't yet as you can see a very loved <laughs> copy of indication of the rights of woman. These are a little bit mix and match. Folio editions, excuse me, at all my French viewers, why, 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 why are you like this? Why are you like, why, why are you like this? Um, I do like these little pocket editions, I think they're quite interesting. This was really interesting, this, yeah, I hate, then I love great ideas because, uh, look, for numbers, this brings me such organised joy. Seneca was fantastic. Marcus Aurelius I've half read because that was kind of dense. I think The Prince everyone should read. Montagna everyone should read. But then I bought this Montagna and I bought this Montagna. But then I just ended up buying this Montagna. So I'd honestly just recommend buying the whole thing. The more classics you can get in there the better. I haven't read these ones. I haven't read these ones. I've read this one a little bit. And then these ones I haven't read. Have I read Descartes? I have read Descartes. Where is he? Fucking hell. This, a discourse on the method, I highly recommend it. I literally just like spat, like this was, this was fucking intense to read. I read this on a plane and like literally my, my brain was melting for the entire fucking time. I really recommend this one. Like I, I can't even remember what it was. Part of me just doesn't want to relive it. If you want to pause this, this is great. Highly, highly recommend it. I think we all need to just melt our brains once in a while. Just because do, 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 do. I like these. I feel like I'm just gonna keep buying more and more and more and more of them. But I need to read the ones I have first. Hmm, this might be a running theme. But that was these guys. So let's move you off of it. So these are vintage ones. And like I said, they're much more like read it rather than study it editions. Does anyone know why some of these covers are bright red and some of them are more like burgundy? Kind of drives me insane. So I do these by size first. So this is then size, author, date. Quite a few of these I've actually acquired recently. I think it's because I'm more in a mindset of like, I know I don't need to study this. So then I am actually going more and more further afield. So I haven't bought an Oxford Classic in a while. I think it's generally because I'm much more like, oh, I can, you know, read whatever I want, which is very exciting. So I'm like, ooh, <laughs> my, my, my mental reading list has just expanded enormously. A couple of people are asking me like, how is it to like, finally able to read whatever you want? kind of overwhelming because I'm so like there's so much shit that I have that I still need to read but then my mind is going bookshop 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 like what did I buy really really recently um the Umberto Echo in the name of the roads which is kind of being adapted by BBC or something and then I'm finally finally bought Frederick the Great by Nancy Medford so that was the last one I kept looking in the French section but obviously Frederick the Great is Prussian but then like where well, I have to try to mentally figure out where Prussia was first um, it's like kind of where like Germany Poland area so found it and then I've got Yeats so I feel like yeah this is much more like 20th century 19th century stuff if you ignore the Cervantes that's over here but I like these ones again these are very very easy to read but these are not editions you want if you want to study the text in my opinion moving on I'm not the world's biggest fan of penguin classics I know that I know that Ophelia would disagree with me you know like different publishers are better with different editions of stuff apparently they, these guys are a lot more like better medieval stuff these guys just do a lot more um better 18th century stuff well, why do I always talk about this that like you're gonna study it but like that's my mindset who the fuck can read with that as like a pen I don't who are these people so this is more my classical stuff and medieval stuff it's got a lot of Homer got a lot of Ovid 
Southworth Bay. Generally, if I buy an author in one edition, I will try and get the rest of their books in this edition. Another one of the reasons Jane Austen infuriates me is because every book of hers I have seems to be in a different edition, which is so irritating. <laughs> it's so irritating. I just, ah, like, I need order. I need order. That's why all of the Mitford um, historical biographies I have being vintage and together and just the order. <laughs> Can we just... Ah! Lit. That was aggressive. It just soothes and calms me. Me, th th I definitely don't have problems with all being organised and all dirt and it doesn't mean my mental state isn't definitely dependent on it in some way. And then over here, we have my... <laughs> my suck it mug. <laughs> that suck it is directly for my dad and brother. And then I have my Penguin, Penguin Modern Classics. And I have some of those Penguin English Library. Because it's not the stuff I read. I don't have very many of them. This shelf. So I just want to show you. I, I, this is just the pride. And this is just the pride and joy of my life right now. This just makes me so happy. Also, you can very, very clearly see that I've only read half of War and Peace. <laughs> Because that's where the spine cracking stops. I'm sorry if cracking the spine brings you guys like pain and stuff. This is a lot of new stuff. I haven't read too much of it. I've, ooh, so Lampedusa. Oh my god, the left was so good. I'm sorry if you guys are like forced to study it. Actually, same with the Calvino. If you guys have been forced to study it, I just I feel so bad for you and I'm so sorry. Because whenever you have to study something, it saps the joy from it to no end. Um also, who's Fred of Virginia Woolf? Fantastic film. Cred I highly, highly rate it. I've talked about the Kilvino already recently. So, so, so good. Um, this I had to read in school, so I've read a few of the stories in here, but I really recommend. I feel like if you're, I don't know, a teenage girl, highly recommend this, but recently haven't read it yet. This I kind of meant to I bought this because it is about the Congo, and I'm, if you don't know, I'm Belgian, so I feel like maybe I should read more on that. My brothers have both read, there's a really large book called Congo. They've said it was really, really good. I have complete fairy tales. We all know the Disney versions, and yeah, it's Brothers Grimm. The shit is grim. Like, some of them are really quite horrendous, some of the stories, which is why, again, I find Carter's interpretation of them very interesting. Like, bloody chambers. This is from Little Red Riding Hood. Um, and also, I just think it's really interesting when you then start looking at, like, adaptation and stuff. I'm so interested in adaptation. And then if you do think about classics and how, like, they take stories and they rework it so, so many times. And then like basically when you go to like Golden Age, when you go to like you're a scene and you're Molière or whatever, they don't come up with original shit. No one comes up with original things. That's just not prize. They just want you to rework classical stuff. So I think the fact that in modern day we do that, but we do that now with like fairy tales and we do that now with, how many times do we have to make a film about Ma Batman? Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> But like, who was who, who was saying that like we're in an age that like prizes originality and stuff? Because that's just not fucking true. If that was true, we would not have this many fucking Marvel films and like DC and shit. I'm just like, I am bored. I don't want to watch another fucking film about Batman. Anyway, um, Alampo does that very very good. I'm, I hope the Yates is good, and we know that Bay. That's good. If you guys actually have any recommendations for non-fiction for fiction, sorry. I would really, really highly, highly appreciate any recommendations. Or if you have any books on her, um, I would love that too. The Rushdie, I had to buy it for class Ideas of Nation. So that's really interesting about like national conscious and then the idea of like you're living on the same kind of time and all that kind of stuff and like being connected and whatever. I will read it, but I'm just not like itching to read, you know? Do, 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 like I said. Oh, this, this. Oh, guys, this was so, this is so good. So. I mean, in terms of like, if you're studying stuff, I don't know how much the general population would want to read it. But if you're doing anything to do with classics, I think this is really good, mainly because it's classics on classics, if you like. It's classical literary criticism. Yeah, Longinus is in here. I can't believe I used a black pen and I can't believe I used a highlighter in here. Um, that's horrendous. But then you have like Plato and you have, who else? Horace. So if you want their opinions basically on themselves, um, this is a good, really good starting point. I have not, I've not read, why is that medievalish and it's about Aristotle? Anyway, I feel like I should read Art of Rhetoric, you know, because 
I do YouTube and write things. Yes, as we know, I have Fanny Hill now. <laughs> yeah, so if this annoys me, I've got Corneille here and then I've got Molière and Racine here and I'm like, why could it not be the same fucking edition? I mean, that's not upsetting at all, but whatever. Not read this, Wet Angels First Tread. Also, my interest in Wet Angels First Tread comes from the line For Fools Are Shin, Wet Angels First Tread, which is actually a line of Pope. Aha. This is what libraries are fun for. Everything's connected. Da, 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 da. Why would you just take one language when you can take comparative literature and do everything? Moving on. Iliad, Odyssey. Right. What drives me insane is the fact that these are two different trans, like by two different people. Um, this is this translation is Robert Fables, and this one is Ryu Ev Ryu. My dyslexia is showing. But like, why would you have? Like, why would you do that? Like. Part of me can't understand why when you have a series you would have these two things by two different people. Also, because this translation is um, prose, whereas this one is still in some kind of verse. Like, why would you do that? I don't have opinions on books. Lol. Ah, oh, my very, 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 like, very loved copy of Dangerous Liaisons. You cannot go wrong with this book. I fucking adore it. Oh god, the cat like basically the characters in here and the way that it's done, it's just it's insanely good. And you should watch the adaptation with Colin Firth is crap, don't watch it, but the one with uh, John Malkovich is fantastic and Cruel Intentions is also fantastic. So it's for that. Uh, I got some Leopardi and I got some Maupassant. I had to read this for like, oh my god, what was it? What did I read you for? I read you for my French A level. Maupassant is good, but I was taught it badly, but it is an enjoyable book. I would not necessarily turn away from it just because you have to like read and stuff, but. Oh my God. It's Bay. so. Aha, no, my God, that was impressive. I thought I was gonna flick through this and you wouldn't be able to see, but I read any of it. Oh, that was so sad. I'm just gonna do that again. Oh, that was great. Anyway, so. These are fun because, okay, some of his essays are like, you know, a couple, like maybe they're like 30 pages long. A couple of them are like a side and a bit. So if you sit down and just give yourself like, oh, I'm going to read for, I don't know, like an hour, you can actually read a couple of like really interesting things. So he just sort of takes a very simple topic and then that's just what he writes on. There is like, there is apparently like a transition that you see between the three, the three books in terms of like what he chooses to write about. I think the cultural impact that Montagna has is reflected in so much more that comes later, especially in French. So I really would highly recommend at least reading some of the more famous ones. So like, for example, like On Solitude and On Friendship and stuff. But if you like him, I would then recommend buying the entire thing. I would then just take the plunge because it is 20 pounds well spent. Oh, uh, 20, damn, 27 US dollars, ooh. Anyway. Okay, yeah, you've got me. I tried to read a page of Ovid and then I stopped because it was long and I had more work to do and it wasn't on our syllabus anywhere so I couldn't justify reading it at the time and now as we know I've got a lot of things I need to be reading but I will read Ovid eventually mainly because it's just myths and shit and that's just so much fun oh the Iliad was great honestly I think the problem with classics a lot of the time is that it's put on this very stuffy pretentious pedestal but yeah okay so the gods are like childish as fuck and they're really petty and they're really vindictive and it's so much fun because they're just dicks to each other the whole time so this is just i expected some kind of like oh grand lofty whatever no this is actually jokes so highly recommend i know the story of the series never actually uh, <laughs> read it um but i just i do want to read this a lot honestly classics is not pretentious i think it's just sort of have this air of like Ew, but i'm like no 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 this shit's fun. Anyway, right, De Quincey, I didn't like you. That was kind of weird. Confessions of an opium eater. Uh, yeah, 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 it's fine. We love Sappho. Nah. <laughs> Normal people, <laughs> gay vibes. Me, an intellectual, sapphic energy. Moving on. The straights are all confused now. Uh, uh, you guys know I bought Jonathan Swift. Um, I really hope. I, I'm, I know I'll enjoy that. See, Sentimental Journey, I like. I really want to read it again. I'm just like, mm. It's short. I should read this next. I have a pile of books by my bedside table of stuff I need to read. Oh, fuck it. Okay, I'm putting it on the book. <laughs> then I've got a Virgil. Uh, I don't know if this is... Uh, I don't know. Mm, I need to read it. I feel like I just need to read it. I do like epic poetry, but I feel like I want to rework it and then make something that's like uh, banter. And then 
Again, the section of Voltaire. Letters on England was fascinating to read um, as an EU immigrant <laughs> here. Yeah, I just love Voltaire. He is full of a lot of sense, and Candide is funny and it's playful, like, even if it is a bit kind of grim and dark at times. Henry Miller, World of Sex, Mary Beard, Women and Power. This I used in my dissertation. This was good. Um, I highly recommend it just to read it. Not the biggest fan of these guys. Um, I haven't really read any of them. Albert Camus is like, he's. Ugh, dude is fucking duck. Dude is fucking depressed. You know, if you want a bit more like French Algeria, like that, read it. You all keep telling me to read Gatsby. Look, I've got Gatsby. But I think I just had such a bad experience with tenderism and I, I read half of it because I was like, fuck this. So I feel like I just need to warm up a little bit to the idea of reading Fitzgerald again. And then I will, I promise I will, but I'm just like, mm, not right now. Sally? I think that's right. Season of Migration to an Office was like more age. Ooh, I can't remember. I did read the entire thing. Was this more like Egypt stuff? Egypt and like immigration and when a young man returns to his village in the Sudan. This is a lot about like perspective, of course, cultural boundaries and stuff like that. So if you want to be less Eurocentric and stuff, hmm, Eurocentric, I guess it is still from a European perspective. If he comes to Europe and goes back, whatever. But if you just want a little bit, go out your comfort zone. Um, this is just something different to read, I guess. Ah, oh, Virginia Woolf. I don't like postmodernism. Is that right? Modernism? I don't know. I feel like I don't have like such a desire to read her fiction, but Room of Vaughan's Own is really good. Haha, -ha, can't get wrong with a bit of feminist literature. Moving on, I'm gonna need to grab my chair. <laughs> I'm just not gonna be able to do this. Oof. This isn't how I imagined this going. <laughs> Why do you watch this channel? I think that's the only thing I have to ask you. Oh look, there's me. So there's quite literally no other way <laughs> to do this. The bookshelf does go all the way to the ceiling. So if I just if I just duck down for a moment, I couldn't even take myself seriously. Right, well. I'm sorry, wait, have I ever taken myself seriously? But I want to take this video seriously because I love books and this bookshelf makes me so happy. Anyway, so these books are the bane of my fucking life. There is no addition, there is no order, and I don't like it. So that's why I banished them to the top shelf because I don't want to look at this because this is not in my direct eye line. A lot of these I had to buy for university, hence why they are the most tickly piggly things ever. But in an attempt to have an order, Everything is done by size because I am just a visual person. That's just how my brain works. So a lot of these, I'm gonna pop back up for this. So a lot of these are actually like half read because I needed to read maybe a chapter or I needed to read like half of it or I just needed it for an essay. I just can't be a standardized book size. Is that really so hard? So a lot of these are very much all over the place. A lot of these are obviously a lot younger books than my others. You know, they're new. They haven't been incorporated into a edition. This is that pile that was on the floor that was kind of like going up higher and higher and really threatening to topple over so that was this. Oh, I did kind of colour coordinate it with size and then again white and then kind of yellow, blue and then black. Okay, I have problems. A lot of these I didn't buy because I wanted to read them, I bought them because they were on a reading list um, and then I didn't necessarily enjoy them and then I didn't finish reading them. So that's just the general gist of these guys. How about we take a, take a closer look? So, slightly guilty pleasure, if you guys no, Shannon Rose is one of my favourite YouTubers. I bought her book. This one was about her porn years. So if you just want to look into a different kind of lifestyle, I think that's really interesting. This I want to check out. That didn't make any sense to me. This is a play. The stupid play arrived two weeks after I'd had that lecture. So that was real great. It's about like Caribbean. Oh, this is about the Caribbean. It's about Haiti. It's about the like independence. I actually can't remember anymore. Yeah, about Haiti's independence. They're the only ones who actually had a successful like slave revolt and stuff. That's correct. Is that correct? Hey, Raja, I feel like, yeah, if you do anything English, like you kind of do need to look at that, know about that. If you do complete, however, this, that is what you need to know. My Mises, because my Mises covers everything, like, ever. He just kind of, Arbach just kind of goes for it. He's like, fuck this, everything's connected, I'm gonna make a point of everything. Where's the contents? So while this is like a little bit sort of cryptic -y, if you've read these things, you will clock it. So this kind of just goes for like, your opinion, all of this to sort of in chronological order. It's very, it's very, it's very interesting. It makes such a good point of how everything links together. But like the possibility that your library will have this as a PDF like online is incredibly high so I would not recommend running out and buying it. You just you don't need to. Um, I have a couple of like Rwanda things thrown in here so I have this one into the quick. This one. Uh, we wish to inform you that tomorrow we'll be killed with our families. And there's another. Where is the other? I have a. Where is she? Oh yeah this one. Veronique Tejo. This is this also is just like <laughs> like really 
it was that it's tough to read and it's kind of heartbreaking but it's really interesting when you look at testimony and you look at like how people retell stories and how people remember things and all that kind of stuff and then the different kinds of like secondhand testimony and all that kind of stuff and like familial and like the difference between like when it's you know a son telling his father's story or like a journalist trying to tell someone's story like how those kinds of things are different so that is interesting if you want to look at it like a little bit less uh, more form and structure rather than content because my god the content is um yeah oh lol this is very emma Ooh, I, oh lol actually maybe louis needs this uh, i'm gonna check that for him for later this is such a fascinating thing to read. I've mentioned it a million and one times. History of marriage. I think it helps you give perspective on like modern relationships if you understand like what marriage came from and stuff, and maybe make you rethink what you might one day want from marriage. Some more tartuffe. Oh yeah. So if you're reading Molière, the Norton Critical Editions are very highly recommended. They come highly recommended. This I bought for a module. I have no idea what it's about. I've never read it. So this I read. This is about the apartheid in South Africa, but without actually like addressing it. So it's kind of like how you look. Uh, the social like moment you're in I guess without looking to wider socio-political context it's kind of like how do you extract the nation if you completely remove the idea of national identity and just like uh, what cohesive national experience like that's quite interesting. Truby I had to buy back in Harvard I just sent the summer out there if you guys didn't know I took directing and screenwriting and this is one of the things they recommended like incredibly highly and I've never opened it I bought it second hand did I? I think I did um Ooh, that's a moral argument? You have my attention. <laughs> yeah, I really should actually have a look at this properly. Um, maybe one day. Ah, uh, last, speaking of Harvard, here is a Harvard Business Review. My dad has quite a lot of these. They are very good, so... You know, you want to do more businessy, think more businessy without actually having to commit to anything. What are you, Derek Walcott? I did a module on um, Caribbean drama. Do you remember Monkey Mountain? I never read this. This was strange. The patois is, like, written down, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then I read it, and then Ellie read it, and then we were like mocking each other's work because we went along, which is quite funny. I, li I like reading plays, you do have to use your imagination a lot, but the problem is I kind of would just always think about how I would make it into a film. It's just what I'm like. Um, ooh, here's, here's, here's Sard. Here is what's gonna, if I show you this, I'm so gonna get demonetized. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, you, okay. So, um, the original copy had like prints made. I think there's like a hundred prints or something. There's a lot. So, yeah, I really hope this didn't ruin your morning coffee or like, breakfast or whatever you guys are doing. This is volume one, by the way. That's volume one. It's a thousand pages long and I want it, but it's like for an English, for a translation in English. I had to go to British Library. I mean, if you guys watched that video, you know how much of a faff it was for me to like get my hands on. But if I actually want that copy, oh God, there's only one in English. It's between like 40 or like 60 pounds. Like it's spenny as heck. So oh, I don't know if I can justify it, but I really want it because it's fucking fascinating. But yeah. Maybe I need that as a treat to myself or something. Oh, at my all my dyslexic friends, I highly recommend this. Yes, look at the enormous font and all the space and da da. Yes, this is a book you should read. It is friendly and easy for us to read. This guy basically finds out a lot later in life that he was dyslexic, and then he's sort of I don't know contextualizing how contextualizing or reflecting back on how that actually has affected his life. Um, and he seems to have like some massive like imposter syndrome from it. But like I had uh, opinions. Um, I had a lot of opinions and. This book made me both very angry and very upset and kind of like because it does make you realize how much sort of suffering we like like dyslexic people go through without even like realizing it becomes part of your normal in a way that you aren't even aware other people don't have to go through it so i think just in terms of looking like at the emotional side of it and the psych no not the psychological side of it but like just the way that the way we are has changed then how we look at ourselves and then also how we do carry this with us when we go through life and the fact that sometimes it is so much more difficult than it should be so if you just want to feel a little bit less i don't know isolated in the fact that like especially as a kid you did suffer a lot even if you don't necessarily acknowledge it and you don't admit it like which basically made me admit to myself that i guess maybe i did um this is good you'll have opinions on it but I think it is very good. Um, I don't know how much I liked it, but there were, fe there were feelings involved. And like I said, you should read things even if you don't like them because feelings are a thing. This is a book my, I think my dad bought like two of and then like ended up here. I've never read Death in Venice. Apparently the film's very nice. This is just another one of those books. <laughs> oh my God, Influencer. Beckett's fun. I'd love to like adapt one of his like kind of more weird plays. 
um, into a film and see what happens. This is interesting. Basically, if you want one tip on directing, it's always make a decision. It doesn't matter if you change your decision later or whatever, you just need to make a decision and not leave people hanging. Roy Porter, I read this for my dissertation. The gist of it is, nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's really dull. More Joyce, I read Portrait of the Artist of a Young Man. As a young man which melted my brain, but has now given me actually a lifelong interest in self-portraits, which if you guys have watched my films, you might know. This is something that I got from, um, that Lauren and Ophelia gave me when they were like thinking about checking it out. I've seen the film. The film of this is beer fucking czar, but I do recommend it. Like it's just such an interesting film and like, just like watching it, like what the fuck am I watching? Um, so I'm quite interested to see how like, uh, how the book would be different. Ah, uh, I know. I am that basic bitch, but this was, oh, that was, I just enjoyed that. That's the end of this. Mum bought me this. I do mean to read it. This is Daniel the that's been exiled up here because it's boring. I hate Robertson Crusoe. Why do I think when I enjoy with Jonathan Swift? Anyway, Manon, let's go. She fun. I almost drove part of my dissertation on her, then I decided against it, but she is a wild ride. And it kind of reminds you that in 18th century France, America does exist but not as America. <laughs> Hamlet, lol. I've definitely shown you guys this before. Mm, my copy of Hamlet is... <laughs> Used and abused. Oh, or Hamper Moot. You also guys seem to love that I've read this. Um, I do want to read another one of his books, so if you have any recommendations of which ones of his I should like acquire next for my collection. This was just good. I just enjoyed reading it. It was just something different for me. It was very, very good. I read that for one of my first year modules and I was so insanely proud of myself that I did. Recommend. Foscolo. He's like the reverse Byron. Where is, where do, where is, there's Byron. Here's Byron in Albanian dress. This portrait, I don't know if it's a real one, is in the natural, is in the National Portrait Gallery. Trag Square, if you are interested. Yeah, but Foscolo is like the reverse Byron. So he's more, he was in Greece and then he went via like Italy and stuff to England and then for, Foscolo, no, Byron does the opposite. Do, do, do. And then we have more Beckett. This study guide, guys, if you have to do Beckett for like an L or something. This was fucking great. This was so, I cannot explain to you how helpful this was. So really maybe you should just pick up a critical guide if you're studying something, I highly recommend. We left some Louise Pentland. This I bought because The Descent of Woman just sounded hilarious to me. This is about Derbyshire's book, This Modern Love. I haven't actually read that, I've flicked through it a few times. I feel like I need more of like a coffee table situation, to be honest. This I thought was gonna help me with my dissertation, didn't read it. This one's because it's pretty. And then this one I bought recently and I'm excited to read it. Why is it, why is it here though? Ah, much better. Moving on. Just bop down for a second. So, hello, this is me. This is my graduation picture, which is also the thumbnail of my graduation video. If you haven't seen that. Like I said, complete grad. Woo! <laughs> But you would already definitely know that because if you, if you see my fucking bookshelf. So I also do film, if you're, hello, if you're new. I also make films. You can subscribe to my film channel there in the, in the description. But I do have a couple DVDs. These are just things that like, or I can find on Netflix or online anywhere. Uh, or if I could, it was horrendous quality. The problem with a lot of older films is they're just, they're just not, which don't exist online. The good thing though is that you can usually buy a DVD for like two or three pounds for Amazon, which is probably cheaper than renting it sometimes. So a couple of these are just films that I have watched a million times or films that again, like I said, which is very hard to get hold of. And up here we have a me. Me. These are just some of the dividends I have. Not that particularly interesting. So that's it. I hope that this was worth the wait. I'm really happy with this. Like it honestly brings me so much joy and like order and just like calm and inner peace every time I walk into the living room this is the first thing I see it fills me with a lot of like pride especially because being dyslexic like I am so impressed with myself about how many books there are and how many of them I've actually read <laughs> it just makes me very very happy and I just I just love I just love books and I just have a fantasy of like having like a snug and like every wall in the snug is just books but yeah this makes me very 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 happy am i gonna stop buying books because i've still got loads to read probably not <laughs> i'm doing my best to be a, you know realistic about how much i can actually read but then again what's the fun in that it's that's the point of libraries <laughs> thank you very very much for watching i hope this was up to your standards of book content from emma like scrum and all that jazz and i will see you guys very very soon
It was your good chronolo chronolo. It was your really good chronolo oh, chronolo. It was your really good chronolo chronolo chronology chronology. Jeans, I can't. Oh. <laughs>